in a building something like this and it had a fireplace and we were supposed to dress up in winter clothes and there would be a fire in the fireplace and we just had an awesome time singing Christmas carols wearing winter clothing, and it's 90 degrees outside. But we had an awesome time, and so I remember that as one of the activities that I looked forward to. And so uh, we're going to have Christmas in July this morning. Uh, Let me tell you something. How many of you have friends? (laughs) You better all raise your hands, right? (laughs) Friends, listen, some of you did not, you know, I'm concerned about that. But... uh, Friends are very valuable, are they not? Um, Long-term friends are a rarity, and lifelong friends are even rarer still. And so we have some guests with us this morning. Um, Colleen is from Texas. Colleen, raise your hand. Uh, Mike and Natasha Lowry. Mike, raise your hand. Natasha, raise your hand. Lifelong friends. And his brother, Mark. uh, I think, Mark, what's your last name? Yeah, Mark. Mark Lowry. And so I asked Mark. He's in town. And uh, I asked Mark and Mike if they would come sing for us. So Mark, why don't you make your way forward? Mike, why don't you come forward? Why don't we give you these guys a hand for being with us this morning? Now, the reason why I mentioned Christmas in July, because um, Mark sings a song uh, called Mary, Did You Know? How many of you have heard that? It has become the, a, Christmas, a Christmas classic, uh, a song that I really, 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 really enjoy. And, uh, and so I asked Mark if he would sing that for us this morning so that we can have Christmas in July. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. All right, good. It better be. It's such <laughs> an honor to be here at Buzz and Karen's Church because I have known them my whole life. I was, I was 17 when I went to the college down the street before it was a real college. I mean, that, back when we went, there was no air conditioning in the dorms, and uh, it was, but it was an adventure. Anyway, we met them. Have known them since. I mean, I they we've known each other since we were young. You know. And this is my perfect older brother, Mike. And uh, I was looking at the This Do Remembrance of Me table that I was raised in churches that always had that, you know. And it was so cool to watch this because this church reminds me so much of the churches I sang in from 1980 to 1988 when I graduated from college about 200 concerts a year in little bitty independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, Bible-banging, foot-stomping, soul-winning, door-knocking, pew-jumping, devil-chasing, sin-hating, King James Version-only Baptist churches. And our preachers weren't always right, but they were never in doubt. Did you know? And I loved it. And that's what I was thinking of this morning when I was sitting here looking, because I would sit my sent my little cassette tape on the Lord's Supper table, and I'd set up my sound system, and I had a foot switch for the reverb so I could sound like Johnny Mathis when I'm singing. (laughs) And it just brought back a lot of good memories, and it's so good to be with you. I wrote this song in 1984. I wrote the lyric in 1984. Buddy Green put music to it in 1991. And it really just comes from questions my mom and I talked about all my whole life. What was it like raising God? What was it like changing God's diapers? What was it like looking down and Jehovah was nursing at your breast? What was that like? My Liberty professor said that Mary was about 13 when the angel showed up. And I've read the Bible through and I've never found that yet, but... We do know she must have been about 13 because they were dead by 40 back then, you know. So as soon as they could, they better start having babies. So the angel shows up and says, Mary, you've been chosen. And then she says, but I've never known a man. And he explains it to her. And then she starts singing the Magnificat. I was reading this one day thinking, this is no time for a concert. You have an angel in the room. Ask him some questions. I think I'd have said, could you run by my mother's room? She's going to need an explanation. 
But Mary just said, be it unto me as you say. And thank God for that little girl who brought us our Savior. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you have kissed the face of God. so glad to be in a church that has hymnals. I love a hymnal. Sing along with me. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sin, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry.
needless pain Oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not care People like me out there are glad you didn't have to stand through that song. <laughs> when did we start standing through songs? I'm 65. I don't want to stand. I've stood enough. All right, let's do victory in Jesus. You know this too, right? How many of you do not know victory in Jesus? I'm so glad these children know it. Uh, how's it start? (laughs) I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like I heard about His groaning I heard about His groaning And His precious blood And His precious blood Uh, Then I repented then I repented of my sin and won the victory. All right, stand and sing. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming. He loved me ere, he loved me ere I do. And all my love, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about His healing of His cleansing power. How He made the lame, how He made the lame to walk and cause the blind, and cause the blind to And then I cried, dear Jesus, and then I cried, come and heal my broken spirit, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood all right you can be seated You see how I didn't make you stand up through three or four songs? That's the way you do it, folks. We're going to end with this one. And then you're going to come up and we're going to do a QA. and a As the Spirit leads. This is a Baptist church. Has the Spirit ever led here? (laughs) Just kidding. Okay. This is an old one I love, too. I love the old hymns. You know, uh, there's a fountain. I, uh, I have a program online, if any of y'all ever want to tune in. It's called Just Whenever, because I go live just whenever I feel like it. <laughs> and I sing all the old hymns, we sing, and I put the words up so everybody can sing along at home. And it's just because so many churches, unlike this one, don't have hymnals in the back of their pew. And our young, precious people won't know Fanny Crosby and blessed assurance Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Oh my goodness. Or could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made where every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe 
by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. Ain't nobody writing like that anymore. <laughs> and like this too. Drawn from Emmanuel's And sinners plunged And sinners plunged Beneath the flood Lose all their guilty stay Sing church Lose all their guilty Sinners plunged and sinners plunged beneath that flood. Lose all their guilty stain. That dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sin away. Sing, everybody. Wash all my sin away. Wash all my sin away. And there. Be seated. <laughs> Thank you. Right. You gotta stay. You gotta stay. Yeah. Now I have an option right here. I'll turn my mic off for on the pages on. Uh, we can either use this as question and answer time for Mark, or you can hear me preach. <laughs> questions, questions. <laughs> 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 so why don't we uh, why don't we just take break. a few moments since Mark and Mike are here? Do you guys have any questions for them? You got one right here. What's that? Children, uh, children, do you have any questions, or do you want to get out of here? <laughs> they want to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Can I go with you? Yeah. <laughs> Make it work. Bye See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. I grew up. The question is, where did I grow up? Mike and I, and my little sister, who also lives in Virginia, over somewhere in the hills. Uh, I don't even know where it is. Do you, Mike? What's the name of the city? Concord. Concord, yeah. See, I live in Houston now, but I'm moving up here. And um, thank you. And what we grew up in Houston, born and raised in Houston. Our parents were raised in Houston. My grandfather, our grandfather, could remember when Houston had one stoplight. That's how far back we go. He could also remember when they invented dirt. <laughs> He's been dead a while. Anybody else? Come on, guys. Questions or a sermon? You better get busy. Story. What? Favorite buzz story. Who? Buzz story. You might be better at that. You travel. See, I was never allowed to be in any of the singing groups at Liberty. I'm not kidding. I wasn't allowed. I never auditioned because I went there to study business. And the Lord called me into this while I was trying to take a nap one day. And uh, so that's why I'm here. But well, I don't have all a lot I know of is for, All I know is when Mark traveled with us, you know, we traveled all across the country many times overnight trips. Mark was up all night. As you see him on stage, that's how he is in person. <laughs> And we could not get any sleep when Mark was on the bus. Anyway, just well, I'll tell you my favorite my favorite bus story is uh, I had just gotten out of a band where we were it was a guitar band, and uh, all the way through college, and then 
uh, I had graduated, and so I was teaching guitar lessons and making big money. Uh, and and uh, Buzz and Sarge walk into the music store, I can see like yesterday, and asked if I wanted to join this group that they headed up called Sound Edition, which was a bunch of horns and stuff. I said, I don't want to play with a bunch of horns. <laughs> so anyway, they said, well, just come and uh, go to the Marcucci Ranch, which is like a week-long rehearsal. And uh, I met Natasha there. She was in the singing group. And there was a bunch of other girls that looked like her, which she is great looking, as you can see. But uh, at 20, she was even greater. I, am I putting my foot in my mouth? Anyway. So, it, yeah, I know, yeah. So anyway, uh, we hit it off right away, and I thought, you know, I am going to play with these horns. And so <laughs> we, we, we traveled for a year together, and we, you know, Married, time? married her, have so four you kids. Owe Buzz. Buzz. Yeah. Natasha. I owe Buzz. Yes, sir. You always used to make fun of Bill Gates and the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear the last part. Who do you insult now? Who do I, just whoever is around. No. <laughs> when I joined the vocal band in 1988, I would do monologues like I did in my concerts, you know, in churches and stuff. I would do a monologue, sing, monologue, sing. That's what, because I started out singing and I noticed people listened a lot better when I talked. So I thought I better dance with who brung me. So, so for eight years, I honed my craft of telling stories on stage. Well, Bill Gaither would be sitting on the piano while I'm in the middle of a monologue and he'd interrupt me. And that's how we got sparring with each other because I didn't know, I'd never had it. I'd never been on stage with anyone else. I'd never been in a group. This was the first group I ever sang in. I'd never had anyone else on stage that might possibly interrupt me. And so he did and it threw me off and so I'd sass him and we got, and finally it just started. It just became a thing and he said, keep the jokes on me. He told me. I said, well, that would be very easy. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I made fun of his hair. That was the obvious target. My favorite one was every time he, his, his last wig, I'd say his last wig was made out of cat hair. Every time he scratched his head, his rear went up. <laughs> that always went over good. But he is, I, we talk nearly every day, you know, Bill and I, just because you look, when, you, when I left the group 13 years after being there, and we had created really a, quite an amazing little thing. It was fun too. It was a lot of fun. And, um, but I knew it was over. I would be on stage and I could feel God's thumb on my heart. And I couldn't hear the music anymore. And I couldn't fake the smiles. So I, to, I called Bill and said, I gotta, call, I gotta have a meeting with you. And he said, what, you gonna leave me? I said, well, if you make me tell you on the phone, yes. And he said, well, listen, we don't need a meeting. You said you'd stay for three years. You stayed for 13. Let's thank God for 13 wonderful years. Wow. And that was it. Of course, we, and then we're still best friends. You know, there was no, we didn't burn any bridges. You know, you don't want to burn bridges. You might have to cross them again, you know. But Bill, no, I left him twice, and he was fine with it both times. Because I came back. And uh, after a while, and so anyway... Oh, I don't even remember what the question was. What was the question? Oh, making fun of Bill. Yeah, and so both times it was great, but I should never have gone back. You know that old saying, you can't go back? It's true. It really is. Because God had other things for me to be doing. But when I, I tell you an interesting story. When Bill called me, he said, I'm going to start a super group with David Phelps, you, Michael English. And when I heard Michael English, I really was tempted to go back because I, I blended with him. There's only one other person I ever blended as well with Michael English is my mother, you know, family. So he called me. I said, well, I got to go pray about it. And uh, so I went to my shower where I do my best praying because no one's in there with me bothering me. And so anyway, I'm in there praying. I said, Lord, do you care if I go back to the vocal band? And it felt like I walked up to my father and I had a pair of blue sunglasses and I had a pair of red sunglasses. And I said, Lord, do you care if I wear the red sunglasses or the blue ones? Do you care if I go back to the vocal band or just keep doing solo? What do, what do you want? It was like he leaned over and said, Mark, I am busy. I'm dealing with Iraq. Do whatever you want. 
I think some things he just choose. And he's okay. And he, and he went on to say in my heart, God never speaks to me audibly. I'm a Baptist. I couldn't handle it. But he did speak to my heart and say, Mark, it ain't about where you are. It's who you are. I'm going to use you if you sit on the back porch and talk to the Orkin man. <laughs> Wherever you are, I'm going to use you. So don't worry about it. Go with the vocal band and go. Keep doing solo. Have fun. Whatever. I'll use you. And so that was a lesson that I enjoyed learning. But I did, I wish I hadn't gone back because it was not right. It just wasn't right. I don't know why. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't right. So anyway, next question. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of relationship do you have with Jerry Falwell? While with who? With Jerry Falwell. Oh, senior? Yes. A good one. You know, I never saw him, but. A little, I mean, he, well, one of the ways God confirmed that he had actually called me, because it was a Sunday afternoon, Alfred B. Smith, remember him? For God so loved the world. And when he'd sit down, it looked like he had a basketball in his pants. Remember that gut? <laughs> Do you not remember that? <laughs> because he had a big belly. Anyway, so I'll give you cliff notes. I was studying business. I was going to be a businessman. It was a Sunday afternoon. Alfred Smith was singing a concert last, that night at Thomas Road, right? And I was, on, it was, I was in my dorm, no air conditioning. It was too hot to get up, and I was too tired to get up. I was, and I was too awake to go to sleep. Have you ever been that? You're too awake to go to sleep, but you're too tired to get up? Always pray that'll put you right to sleep. That's what I do. And I figured that's, that's my sedative, because when I start praying, I sometimes at night I'll fall asleep. And I think, what healthy father wouldn't love for his children to fall asleep talking to him? That's what I think about my papa upstairs, up there, you know. But anyway, so I'm on my bed trying to go to sleep, and I promise you, and looking back, I think it really was him. The Lord spoke to me and said, why won't you do what I want you to do? I came to and, and started talking to him like this was normal. I'd never talked to him like this before. I'd never heard him speak to me like that before. But it seemed like, oh, I know that voice. And I just started praying back to him and said, I'll do whatever you want me to do, and you know it. Even if it means going to music, well, you've never mentioned it. You've never called me. And I said, and he said, well, I'm calling. I said, okay, this is your idea. You get the word out. And so Charles Hughes came up to me that week and said, will you be my singer on the road? Falwell passed me in the hallway and said, I heard you sing on a TV show in Texas. Will you sing Sunday? And as I was, oh, and then I put out a fleece that even God couldn't do. And that was that, um, that they would ask me to sing that night in church. Well, Alfred B. Smith was doing a concert. I was a freshman. Why would they do that? I hadn't sung anywhere on that campus. I had no intentions of being in any kind of group. I had done that as a child. I had a recording contract as a child. That was something you do as a child. You grow up, you go to college, you get a degree, you do that. Get a wife and kids and support missions is what I thought the plan was. And the Lord said, why won't you do what I want you to do? And I said, I will. And I said, but they have to ask me to sing tonight in church. I knew that couldn't happen. Alfred B. Smith was singing. So I got through the whole service thinking, oh, boy, I, I, that was the devil. It wasn't God. It, I put out a fleece and God answered it. I didn't sing in church tonight. And I was walking out that side door almost out of the building when Dave Randlett stopped me and said, will you sing in chapel in the morning? I thought he didn't even like me. I didn't even know he, I didn't know he knew I could sing. And the Lord said, where are you? I said, I'm in church. What just happened? They asked you to sing. Hmm. <laughs> so I said, Okay. That this is your idea, you can get the word out. And then Charles Hughes, Dave Moss, I mean Charles Hughes and Falwell. And then we had that wreck. I broke 11 bones. Charles was, some of you may know that. But anyway, that, well, we were, Charles would take, Charles was the preacher. I was the singer. David Musselman was the piano player. And a man in Michigan had bought us a van that we could travel in. And Charles Hughes, would take a world map and a yardstick, and if it reached, he thought we could drive it in the weekend. 
And we were here and here and here. And for one weekend, we were headed to Tioga Center, New York. Got as far as Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And Dick Bernier, our driver, was asleep. He'd fallen asleep. He was kind of weaving a little bit. And I came to and said, Dick, wake up! And he grabbed the wheel. And then he slammed it into the guardrail. And then slammed it into the median. And I thought, Lord, I should have let him sleep. <laughs> we were finally broadside in the road in an 18-wheeler top the hill. Crashed and I fell through the cracks in the side of the, road, of the car, the van, and Charles was in a coma for two and a half months. Anyway, that was the end of our group, but it was the beginning of what I have been doing ever since, which is this, you know, talking and singing. And, uh, and it's just so cool to see, because, I mean, the idea of being in the Gaither vocal band, I had heard of them. I didn't even really care that much about them. I love the trio. I love Bill, Gloria, and Danny. I love a woman's voice in there. Men's, four men's voices sounds like a mud wall to me. I need a woman in there to break it up, you know? Yeah. And so that's how my ears work. But so I, if the Lord had told me on that first day, Mark, let me, I'm calling you, but let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to break all kinds of bones. You're going to have to sing baritone in a quartet one day. You're going to be a comedian. I would have run for the hills. I'd have found myself in the belly of a whale. But I'm glad he doesn't tell us everything. I'm glad that I found out on my own I could be a comedian. And I even hate that word. I'm a storyteller, and hopefully there are jokes in the story that kind of hold your attention. Because Baptists, I learned quickly, my people, back then, they wouldn't clap at the end of a song. That's giving glory to men. And that's fine. I, I don't need to be clapped for. And they wouldn't shout back then because they're afraid someone might think they're doing it in another language. <laughs> but they would laugh. That's how I knew they were listening. And all I cared about is, are they listening? If they ain't listening, you can't tell them stuff. And humor became my way of bringing down walls so I could get people to pay attention. And I never knew it was coming. Dinner conversations. Well, when I, I, I have failed at retirement about five times. And one of the times I was trying to retire, I thought, well, I got to do something. So I'll start a podcast. And I love to eat and I love to talk. And I've had some of the best conversations around the dinner table that I wish to the Lord we had recorded. You know, so many fascinating discussions about everything in the world with Gloria. Bill, people that I respect. And so I thought, let's start, let's do a podcast like that. So you can Google Dinner Conversations with Mark Lowry and Andrew Greer is his name. He, he and Andrew Greer was a young man that interviewed me for a CCM magazine. And I was so impressed with his questions that I said, I'd like to do this with you because you ask good questions. Excuse me. And so we have, we've had everybody in, we quit it because I don't know any more people. I've, I've interviewed everybody I know, you know. Yes, ma'am. Did you ever sing your mom's song? He said, I thirst. I did. I recorded it. Well, yet he made the river. She wrote a good one. He said, I thirst, yet he made the seas. I thirst, said the king of the ages. In his great thirst, he brought water to me. Pretty good, mama. But she and I both are one-hit wonders. We, we've done it really good once. <laughs> well, this is, I hope this has been fun for y'all. I want to leave you with something. that I, I, If I were to leave you with a sermon, and this just popped in my head, and I've been talking about it a lot, so my brother and my family has already heard this, but I've been thinking a lot about worry, how we can tend to worry, and how a friend of mine, Paul Young, who wrote the book called The Shack, if you've never read it, you really ought to. He wrote an article in his blog called Future Tripping. It's actually how, it says, uh, when joy came to stay. You know how joy will enter your life and you'll feel it, and then all as soon as she comes, she's out the door. You know, she's never been a long, he talks about that. But the thing that caught my attention about all this is that our God is the great I am. 
He's not the great I was or the great I will be. He is never in the past. He is never in the future. You can correct me if any of this is wrong. But he's never in the future. He's only in the present. I think that's what he meant by saying, I am that I am. He's always in the present. No matter what day it is, he's always in the present. No matter what day. So I have to deduce everything to a bumper sticker so I can understand it. He will not wallow with you in your past because it doesn't exist. And he will not worry with you about your future because it doesn't exist. You play out those scenarios, mamas, I know you. You worry about those children and those grandbabies. What if, what if, what if? You're feeling the same emotion as if you're living it. Your heart's racing. Your breathing is getting labored and you're staying up all night and it's not even happening. <laughs> but if you do go through it, he'll go with you. Because then it's in the present, right? He ain't, he's not the great I was, the great I will be. He is the eternal, ever-present God. And one day we'll be there with him and we'll be in the everlasting day. And I think this, now this is my brain running wild, but none of this is Bible. But listen, I believe when we get to heaven, since we're in the everlasting, everlasting day, the present, the great now, right now, everything, all time has been compressed and compacted into now. You want to go see the day you were born? Let's go. It's happening. You want to go see the resurrection? Let's go. It's happening right now. Maybe. Amen. <laughs> whenever, I, whenever I veer off the trail, I close. <laughs> And you want me to follow that? <laughs> I think uh, there, are, there are two people in my lifetime who I believe really, really communicated the message of the gospel and song. Really communicated. One was my father-in-law. Yes. Yes. And the other is Mark. I really, really, really believe it. He knows how to communicate the message. Better than preaching. I mean, it is preaching through song. And I am so, I'm honored. I mean, I am honored to call these guys my friends. We're honored to call you our friend. I'm honored to call him my pastor. <laughs> anyway. You do have one more song, right? Yeah, well, at, uh, we'll close. Now or later? Um, we're just about done. We've got about five minutes. How long's your, How long's this song? Oh, about five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. All right, let's do it. This is what we went through when we were on the road. <laughs> it was all nonstop. But just I like was this. never on the road. You, might, I never did go on the road with y'all. You what were on the bus a couple about? times. I know. That. I was because I had a roll of duct tape. There was a couple times I was <laughs> <laughs> up on the seat. <laughs> Mark, why don't you do one song and then we'll close in prayer. This song was written by Pat Terry and, uh, and on one of the vocal band records, Bill had me do it and I love this song. What happened? That's kind of love. This has been fun being with y'all. Thank you for letting us interrupt your services. Hey, Nate. There's Nate back there. Hey, Nate. Look at everybody. That's Nate right there. Stand up and let everybody see Nate. This is our buddy. Love you, buddy. Come on. Peace. Mm -hmm.
But if they said, Mark, you'll have to choose between the two, I'd go home. Going home where I belong. When I'm dreaming It comes as no surprise That if you look You'll see that homesick feeling In my eyes I'm going home I'm going home Where I belong forward to amen. amen one day we're going to hear that trumpet sound the dead in Christ are going to rise first then we who are alive will be caught up together with them in the air and so we shall ever be with the Lord what an awesome reunion that's going to be you and Doug and your mama and and the food, and the food. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> at that last banquet right the great supper that's right the great supper I wonder what they're going to have what do you think they're going to have of men what God has prepared for those who love him. His standards are so low. All you got to do is love him. Think about that. And he's got Spielberg hadn't thought of what's waiting on you. Because eyes have not seen. Mm. Ears Amen. Have not heard. Yeah. For those who love him. Yep. Man. So what's not to love? You know, that's the other thing. In fact, I wrote a song about what's not to love. Mm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hey, hey uh, let's stand and close in prayer, would you? Hey, let's give Mark and Mike a hand for being with us. Hey, would you like him to come back and do a concert here one night? I think that'd be cool, wouldn't it? 
We'll, bo- we'll book it, right? When you move back up here, yeah. Let's close in prayer. Father, we're so thankful, Lord, to be here this morning. Father, what awesome fellowship. Father, we had it with each other. Father, thank you for Mark and, and for Mike and Natasha and for Colleen, Father, being with us here this morning. And, and just, Father, listening to someone, Father, who believes what they believe in song, Father, and to hear it, the testimony, Father, and, 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 and the sincerity, Father, that was there. Father, thank you so much. Lord, I pray that you would challenge us to be ourselves, Father, using the gifts and talents and abilities that you've given us, Father, in the worlds in which you have placed us, Father, to win people to Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this awesome morning. We give you all the praise, Lord, all the honor and the glory. In your precious name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Go in his peace.